tore into this a little bit, but I figured I'd start here. This is farm radio, and what we're digging into now, this is a Magnavox Stereo 750 receiver from about 1974. And, um... At first I said, nah, then sure, why not? USA, I believe... But it does have these European capacitors, which I can't read. Red, black, yellow, black. I can figure it out. Now uh, the problem with this is, why I've torn into it, is uh, the dial string. It's not broken, but it's messed up. And it's got quite a uh, journey here. It's got a pulley there, a pulley there, a pulley here, a pulley there, a pulley here. So what I've done so far is uh, walk it back to um, closing the plates. I've closed the plates. We'll set the pointer at the top and we'll try to uh, restring this. The string is not broken. The problem is the counterweight here, the weighted uh, tuning, the brass here, it's all gummed up which causes the nut to get loose and yeah, it just went downhill from there, whoever owned this. But the rest of it's cosmetically perfect. I don't I want to break this pointer here. I've got to be careful of that. Uh, let's give it a whirl. I'm going to oil uh, with some PTFE oil, um, synthetic oil. I'm going to oil this brass bushing here that it glides on. I've reinstalled it. In the same fashion, this is where your little Magnavox handy tool would come in handy, but I used a pair of needle nose to get that tight. So it's uh, it's all the issue was. A little lubrication in the right place does wonders. Okay, well I was not able to find this exact model in Sam's. I did have a little bulletin on the 8895. 1K8895. This is the 1K8894, but for all intensive purposes, that's all we need. Uh, it does show somewhat of the dial string here, which I could go by, but it also gives the diagram, so we're going to try to go from here. This will be 88 up here. And let's see how we do. Okay, I think I have it. The diagram wasn't very hard to follow. It's just cartoons, these cartoons. I don't like drawings. I can't see. It says start here, which I'm assuming is the spring, or is it the... Or is it the hook? Is it the spring, or is it the hook? You can't tell, because it comes down around. It looks like start is the spring, but how would you end it with the hook? How would you end it with the... You have to start with the hook. And this is the end, the one that goes around and goes on the spring. But when you do that, the spring, it tends to walk down here. And you lose the whole show. It comes out of the little socket. I may, that may explain why they put a dab of glue on these sometimes. Because it's just barely catching. And if it, it's just catching. And if it should slip off and go down here, you lose it. So it almost needs, almost needs to be crimped over here more or something. I think a dab of glue will do it. But it didn't have glue. But a dab of glue would prevent that. Okay, I'm at 88. i give you a demonstration. I have my four turns here. Going around all the pulleys as it should. And it's pretty tight. And I'll give it a whirl. Works fine. Thing that bothers me is when you get down towards the end here. If you go pull too far, it can slip out of that hook. So I may put a dab of glue there. So here we go at the bottom of the dial again, back up.
works very smooth. This is flywheel tuning. I don't know what I said earlier, but it's flywheel tuning. So now I'll have to plug this thing in and see if it actually operates. Okay, before we power it up, I'm going to take these loose decals off and I'll I'll glue them back when I put a dab of the uh, cement on that tuning string. And one day when it's nice, I will blow all this out, but let me pan around the uh, unit. There's our power supply. I like to say preamplifier. That's a strange chip there with a 1971 date code on it. Sprague IC there. Here's our drivers and our outputs. And the whole back of this I'll add is aluminum. And of course our filter caps for each each supply. I've tested the fuses for each channel and they're fine. I have a pair of high fidelity uh, full range speakers here hooked up for testing. So we'll put the front panel back on and give it a whirl and you could tell that that tuning was scraping for some time as evidenced by the uh, around the dial there but the rest of it's okay and when reattaching the front panel you can see they put this notch in the uh, flywheel to allow you to get your quarter inch nut driver there to tighten things up Two here, two, one on each end here, and uh, three, four on the bottom. Back on all metal knobs, I should say, by the way. And uh, we'll power it up and see how we do. Have it plugged into the watt meter. We have speakers A on. I also I want the volume. That's right. That's valid. You can't see what things are until you turn it on. Bass and treble in the middle, balance in the middle. FM and AM. I like to start with AM. So when we power it up, we'll be on AM. Okay, here goes. Okay, I'll put the power on here and I'll hit it over here. Seventeen watts. Don't really hear much going on here. Minimal sound in the speaker there. Okay, we'll check this out. Okay, although I have no sound from the speakers, 
I am picking up some FM reception. So we'll see what's going on here. It appears some of it's working. I don't think it's muted. And we're not on tape. Okay, let me look a little further. Okay, as I always like to do in the headphones, both channels are working. Except when I put it in stereo, I lose I lose the um, I like to say the left channel when I put in stereo mono it'll, it'll resume so something's going on it could be the switches I don't know yet both channels work AM I've got a little troubleshooting to do here, but I'm not too worried. We did get some sound out of the speakers. So I'm thinking, um, I should do some signal tracing here and try to figure out what's going on. The area really kicks in, but the other channel goes away. All right, that's going to do it for right this second. All right, I suppose we could do a little bit of troubleshooting. I bet you it's just dirty switches, possibly a failed transistor or two, but um, for the most part, I have the amplifier section here, which is here, and I have the complete layout over here. So I want to go to Q401 and 402, to, that's the beginning of the amplifier, but I can tell you that uh, the tape output, which is here and here, is stereo, see? Okay, so we're receiving stereo, and it is in stereo at that point. The tape output is right around here. These two transistors, I didn't look where they are, but 301 and 302. 301 is there, 302 is here, the emitter. Both have nice signal. So what about up here when we get to the amplifier? I don't know what takes place in between a lot of the uh, switches, I, I believe. But um, all right, let's go to the base of 401, which is uh, this guy over here, which I can't even see. I can't even see who's who. Very weak. And uh, we'll try the base of 402, which is this guy. Nada. I can't even read what's on. Can't even read the board here. Here's E. Oh, come on. Let me brush through this so I can see what I'm doing. Process of elimination here. If I could see the other one. Oh, I don't know. Not a lot going on here. Not a lot going on on 40, 402, which is 
right here. I have to get underneath this to see a little deeper. I want to check it at the volume control. Okay, here's a look at the underside. And one thing I can tell you is every ground is cracked. All the solder crack on virtually every ground. The balance control has crack solder. Like that one right there. But they're all like that on the balance control. I think there's a couple on the volume. And uh, I think the base, no, there's some on the base, I believe. Yep, the base control is also cracked. So I'm going to touch up some of these and the grounds and then uh, revisit. I'll check this out further down the road, but we reflowed all the grounds and the controls, and there were even some of the output transistors that were cracked. Not terribly, but there were a couple. So on that note, um, you need to use the gun for the grounds, and I use the regular pencil for the, uh, the controls and whatnot. Okay, we'll fire it up, see what it does now. Nineteen seventy one, that's the year of this receiver. So anyway, with this solder reflowed, I have both channels in stereo. In stereo, both channels. Left, right. In the headphones, mind you, I haven't gone to the speakers yet. The loudness works. Okay, we better. All right, let's try some speakers here. Nothing. I'm gonna unplug the headphones. Yeah. Very little. Just. Just out of both tweeters, very little frequency on the speakers. Absolutely no bass, but they are playing. No bass, just very faint high frequency on speakers. But it's fine here. So I can try flipping the switches here, but I don't think that's going to do it. No. Everything's working. It's um I'll troubleshoot the amplifier here. Okay, some other ab abnormalities was the tape monitor switch, the switches of course, so we gave them a shot with some cleaner. A little goes a long way, and I gave the speaker switches a couple shots and the headphone jack because that can cause problems. So at this point we have stereo reception left and right channel in the headphones only. No amplifier yet. We'll get to that. And the dial seems to be pretty accurate also. All right, back to the amplifier. Okay, just to show real quick, this is what we have on the speakers, amplified, mind you. 
So signal's getting through. Don't short out the transistors there. Okay. You have to move this guy. I don't like him there. That's the trouble with test leads. You have to be careful not to ruin your equipment while you're probing around. Test leads fall off and fall in the works. Let's try it over there. It's a little safer. Now that's at the speaker terminals, mind you. And back to the preamp. So it's here. Signal's making it from the radio through the preamp and the volume, bass, treble, tape monitor, etc. It's at the record outputs. No amplification. So we got drivers, pre drivers, the fuses are good, and the outputs themselves. Dried up capacitors. Seems odd that it's both channels, but we'll probe around the bottom now a little bit. And we have the schematic, so we'll start tracing there. That's one of those black, black top transistors there. And over here is just a regular one, regular top. Okay. Those capacitors I was touching the top of was this C406 and C405. Is that the emitter? Hmm. I want to check the base of 402 and 401 again. Or check the collector. Something's not getting through over here. But there's sound here though, so. Yeah. Let's take a. Let's look around here a little. I am at the base the of is that many men driver don't three, see treatment. They live with the Q407, and they suffer with the results of I'm at the anode of D403, right here. Today. The Northeast Men's Clinic has successfully and it's good. Thousands of men just like you. We know what you're I'm going to check the other channel. I'm going to check the anode of... Anode of D four oh four. So make an appointment today. Your first visit is only ninety nine dollars and includes blood work and if medically advised a test dose. If that test dose doesn't work in the office, D four oh four is going to be right here. That's good. What's that tell us? Let's start taking some voltages and uh see what's up. So we're good here at driver 3 and we're good here at driver 3 also uh, down here. Or driver, yeah, this one. So where are we losing it? I want to check the base. I think the base of the outputs are good. something in here on both channels we'll check some voltages well the outputs are gone I let me see our headphone jack which after a 2 watt resistor 270 ohm comes right from the right from the output so it appears the outputs are working is it the speaker switches I've sprayed the speaker switch. Let's check our speakers here. Well, that's one for the record book. Always test your test speakers here. I have I have nothing here. So as far as I can tell, this thing is going to work when we hook some regular speakers up to it. What do you know? Put a battery across that speaker. There's nothing. I have to check these speakers out. Let's uh, hook up a pair of working speakers to the uh, Magnavox and see what happens. Beautiful.
station. And the dial is right where it should be. From the store watch night weather great center, FM tuner in this from ZLX. Stereo. Good separation. Left, right. Mono. Stereo. This is working fabulous. Three of those categories were down. That's. There's a station on every. About blues every guitarist who yeah, alongside it. Okay, enough of this. I'll uh, put the decals back on and we'll put the cover on for now till we get a chance to blow this out. Ultra strong. I figured I'd look at what was the uh, problem with their test speaker and I guess that might have something to do with it. Thanks for watching.